Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. If you've watched any of my videos before, you will know that I've just come to the end of my very first year as a doctor and I have just started F2. I was just thinking to myself the other day, I wonder if I could go back in time and give myself some tips from what I've learnt this year, I wondered what I would say and I ended up talking about it with a few of my other F1 colleagues who are also now F2s and I asked them if they wouldn't mind being on camera and like if I could film their tips to themselves. I was thinking that it might actually help out a few people who are starting F1 now. So August is the changeover month for doctors which means that all the doctors who, all the people who have just graduated from medical school they become F1 doctors, foundation year one doctors, and they actually begin their working life as a doctor in August, and it can be quite an intimidating experience, even though it's a really exciting thing to be starting work. There's a lot to learn, and there's a lot to take in. I asked my colleagues, and they very kindly gave their tips. I have subtitled the video purely because where I was filming was sometimes a bit noisy and the sound quality isn't great. Also the scenery isn't great because we did just film these videos in our breaks and we grabbed whatever space in the hospital we could to film this video so apologies for the terrible surroundings. But anyway, I hope you guys find this video useful. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you do find it useful and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of content. So the question that I posed to all of my colleagues was if you could go back in time by one year and give yourself some advice, what would you tell yourself? So let's get into the video. Hi, so my name's Joe and I'm just finishing my F1 here on general surgery. Hi, my name's Chris. I'm one of the anaesthetic and ICU F1s. Hi, my name is Radhika and I'm just about to finish F1 and I'll be moving on to starting my F2 very soon. Hello there, my name is Tan. I'm one of the F1 currently working at Lincoln County Hospital. Hi, uh, my name is Nika Vimori, one of the F1s finishing the F1 programme. So hello guys, uh, my name is Dan. I'm an F1 here at the Lincoln County. So if I could go back in time of year, there are two things I'd want to do differently when starting my job. First one's got to be really make an effort to learn names because you're going to meet so many people, especially if you're on a job where you move around wards. So it's important to make sure you know who everyone is. And when you need to ask for something, it's always much nicer when you address someone by name. So big one, make sure you learn everyone's names because you're, you're all a team, you're all working together. So it's, it's nice to do that. Second thing, you're going to have so many things you need to, to chase to get signed off for your portfolio. So don't be shy with it. Be proactive, get in there quickly always broach the question because people are often too busy to offer these opportunities up to you. So get, get in quickly, get them done, and then before you know it, they'll all be done and you won't have to worry and it's all signed off and you can get on with enjoying your job. I probably said just try and relax. I know it's going to be really scary. My first rotation was cardiology and I had no idea what I was doing. I've forgotten all my cardiology medicine. I think when you're on a call or you're asked to see someone, a lot of things go out of your head, you're not quite sure what you, you're supposed to do. As long as you've gone through your A to E and you can tell that to your registrar of the phone, they're not going to be upset. When you're going to a handover, make sure that you've just got the patient's name, their NHS number, and kind of exactly what you want that person to do. Because when it comes to you and someone just hands over something and you're not quite sure what you want to do or what's actually going to happen, then it can be quite frustrating. When you get bleeped by a nurse, just try and get an understanding of what's going on. So a lot of the time you might not get a proper S bar handover, but just ask, can you give me the breakdown of the new score? How concerned are you? What, what is the actual reason you want me to come and see them? Because then it gives you a better understanding of what's actually going on. Take your breaks, definitely take your break, especially when you're on cover. You'll be running around the place. You'll never feel like you're gonna have any time to have lunch, but you need to take that break. You need to take that, especially because it's 12 hours, so you need to take your one hour break. A few pieces of advice that I would give is not to panic. If you feel overwhelmed by jobs, just make a list, prioritise and do what you can do really. Secondly, make friends with the nurses. They know what they're doing and they've been doing this for a while, so always seek their help. Important. So first of all, do look after yourself, both physically and emotionally. In terms of emotionally, I find that it's often quite neglected, but when you have a very stressful day at work, or I have a quite a difficult uh, conversations with uh, patients or with my colleagues, I would definitely uh, find somebody to, uh, to talk to about uh, maybe your colleagues, your seniors. And for me personally, I find it very helpful to speak to my wife about it. 
in terms of physically, sometimes I find that when I'm on uh, long shifts, like night shifts or SEAU or MEAU shifts, I find it quite helpful to uh, bring your snacks with you. So look after yourself. Make sure you don't go hungry or go uh, dehydrated to doing those long shifts. And also I find it quite helpful to, when you first start out, you don't know how to manage acutely ill patients, bring uh, an Oxford handbook uh, with you, which can help to give you some tips in case if you're quite stuck with these really sick patients and uh, also your senior will be would quite appreciate it if you make a very terrible plan. Personally, I find the most enjoyable things about being F1 my whole experience working in teams so I find it really enjoyable working with uh, the nurses, uh, my seniors, uh, people from other uh, specialties, my F1 as well. All of them they've taught me lots of different things and it made me realize that um, Actually, I don't know a lot of things, but I can always ask for help. I just say this whole, this whole year is about learning. Don't forget that you obviously have your job, but um, the whole point is to try and learn as much as you can. Um, you have enough information from med school to get by and do your jobs, but if you don't understand something, your seniors are there to help you out and teach you. Um, don't feel like you need to do something that you're not qualified to do or that you don't understand and if someone's ill go back to basics do um, your a b c d e get them stable and then you have your regis to help you out after that and yeah it's a whole learning experience so have fun you obviously have the good days when you get a procedure right or get a diagnosis right um, and treat someone properly so those are my favorite days uh, small wins first of all breathe like it's going to be a crazy year yes it's a bit of a change from stepping up as a medical student to actually working as a doctor but it's definitely doable I would definitely say you do have time to continue with your normal hobbies and also find time to be a doctor I don't know if I realised that at the beginning because you just assume that you're going to be so busy you won't have time to do your normal things, you won't have time to you know, go home and see your family or to, if you're in sport, do that you know, in your free time but you will, you definitely will have time to so just make sure that you have time to relax. I definitely tell myself that if you have a bad day at work, try and relax when you go home because it's very easy just to let bad days play on your mind. Definitely try and relax because, you know, once the day is over, there's no more you can really do. So just try and, you know, take your mind off it, however you choose to do that. If it's watching TV, if it's going to see friends, going to, going to the cinema, then just do whatever it takes for you. And I guess I'd say, yeah, just try not to overthink it. It's a year for you to really learn. It's your foundation year. You know, you're going to encounter so many so many things which you know will make you a better doctor at the end of the day so just embrace the experience is what i'd say you know being in situations where you feel uncomfortable so for example on my nights which initially i really um, felt uncomfortable doing being in that environment where you have to deal with, with a patient that's acutely unwell you know your practical skills improve your ability to just manage patients generally improve I've enjoyed that experience. So guys, some great advice there. What do you think? I was blown away by some of those pieces of advice and I feel that all of them were really useful nuggets of information. So if you are starting F1, then I wish you the best of luck and I hope that you've got a couple of little tips from this video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found it useful and you can subscribe to my channel and view my playlists if you'd like to see any other videos about being a doctor or being a medical student. I'll see you next time guys, bye!